Lance with Anderson Manufacturing Company. We're going to use the leak track for finding leaks in vinyl liner swimming pools. So here are the components of your leak track system. First of all, we have a float that puts the electrical charge into the pool water. There's an anchor on this that anchors it to the bottom of the pool, a brass plate that puts the charge into the pool water. This gets plugged into the booster, and the booster is the component that houses the batteries that are going to create the charge that go into the water. Finally, we have a ground cable with a clamp on it. That will be clamped to a ground connection outside the pool and plugged into the booster as well. These three components are what's going to put the electrical charge into the water and create the circuit that we're going to use to detect where that leak is. The next components, the probe, is used for detecting the flow of electricity in the pool and bringing us to where that leak is. The probe is a PVCT with a black mark on one end. That end is the end that uh, will direct us in the proper location. Finally, we have the signal processing unit. The signal processing unit will create the beeping sound that you'll use to bring yourself to where the leak is and provide the controls that allow you to control the sensitivity of the unit. There are two optional pieces of equipment in your system. Those would be the headphones, which will plug into the signal processing unit. When the headphones are not plugged into the unit, there will be a beeping sound that's created with the speakers in the system. Finally, there's a long cable that's used to connect the black box or the booster with the signal processing unit in some situations. These two components have to talk to each other. Normally, they'll do so with a wireless connection. But if you're at a pool where there's some interference, this long booster cable will allow the system to operate properly. So let's get it set up. Setup should take us about a minute. We start with the float, and first we're going to plug this float into the booster, and then unravel the anchor a little bit, throw that in, throw the float into the water. Next, our ground cable will be attached to the booster, and we're going to make a ground connection. The ladder anchor, diving board anchor, or maybe even a screwdriver or a piece of rebar put in the ground. Finally, signal processing unit gets put around our neck, and our probe gets plugged into the back of that signal processing unit. then gets attached to a vacuum pole. I like to pull the cable up the length of the pole and I'm often going to tape the cable to the pole so it's out of our way as we use it. Finally, the probe goes in the water. We're going to shake the bubbles out. Turn the unit on. We're ready to go. So what we're doing with the leak track is we're putting a real small electrical charge into the pool water. And then we're making a ground connection outside the pool. All of that electricity going into the pool is trying to get back to ground in order to complete its circuit. In a vinyl liner swimming pool, because the liner is a good insulator, the only path to ground is through a conductive hole or penetration in the liner, thus a leak. The way we're using the leak track is that electricity that's being put into the pool is creating a flow as it goes from the input float to wherever it can find a connection to ground. We can't see that flow of electricity, but we detect it with the probe of the leak track. As we survey the pool, we'll find that as we're pointed in directions that electricity is moving with the black striped end, the leak track will beep. Pointed in the opposite direction, it doesn't. We're being told here that there's a leak someplace in the direction that the black striped end is pointed. Now we'll sweep the pool. The closer we get to that leak, the more rapid that click rate becomes because there's more electricity being focused on a smaller area. We'll get to a point where we get a peak in that click. And that's the point of the leak. Now, no matter if we were to pass by this, the clicking stops. Our electricity is no longer moving towards the leak as far as the probe is concerned. Now it is.
There's our problem. Time to go down and confirm that with a dye test. The challenge to using the leak track in a pool is that leaks aren't always the only connection to ground. In this case, we're getting a real strong reading at the light because of the metal niche that's a strong connection to ground and is giving us a strong leak track reading. In order to make leaks easier to find in the swimming pool, it's helpful if we can cover or eliminate any of those non-leak connections to ground that we can. Okay, so the light cover is going to be used to cover these underwater pool lights. This is a big acrylic dome that's electrically insulating and we have a flexible gasket around the outside. This is actually a blown up bicycle inner tube. We find that it works the best in order to make a seal against the, the walls of the swimming pool even if they're a radius wall. What we're doing with the light cover is we are going to um, put it over the light and then using these hoses that are attached to it we're going to pump the water out from behind the light cover so we're basically lowering the water level behind the light cover in relation to the water in the pool. We have two hoses here. These hoses are going to have to stay on the pool deck. We're going to capture a little bit of air in this light cover as we put it down over the light. That'll keep it in place. And then we use the hand pump water out from behind the light cover. So as we pump the water out from behind the light cover, we'll be able to see the water level actually go down, and we know then that there's enough differential in the, the pressure that the weight of the pool water is going to hold the light cover against the wall long enough for us to do our leak track test. Skimmers, returns, and other fittings may occasionally give you a leak track reading even though they're not leaking. The reason is that the screws that penetrate through these fittings are making connection to ground, and thus there's a path that the leak track will pick up. The best way to eliminate these or disqualify them is just to do a dye test around those fittings, which is usually simple to do.